Hello there, I'm Scotty, you're not. Welcome back to the Smuggle Retrospective. We're on Season 2, Episode 19, entitled Precipice. It's a slow trudge to the finish line. This episode was, it was okay. I, I liked it better than the last one, it just... I want something to happen, and nothing is really happening. There's some stuff going on, but uh, this introduces us. This episode introduces us to the new sheriff, Sheriff Adams. I don't like her. I don't. I know they wanted her to be the antithesis of Ethan, where Ethan was kind of favorable and kind of just went about. He had, you know, he showed favoritism to a lot of people. Where, as Sheriff Adams comes in and is just, you know, smacking people, not smacking people, but you know what I mean? She's just tough as nails, this woman, right? And I'll give it to the actress. She's good. I just, I don't know. So, Lana is working her shift at the Dallin. It's getting late, and these college students, played by this one guy who was in an episode of Supernatural, uh, one, one of them is... Um, was it the other ones? Um, they're harassing her, and he harasses her, and then he, when she does not go over his advances, he hurts her. He pushes her, which, by the way, she doesn't get like really hurt or anything. I don't know, but he pushes her, and she goes through a display. Here comes Clark to save the day. He tells them to leave. And they make the fatal mistake, that they don't die, but of calling her a bitch and a slut in front of Clark, which really pisses him off. He flings two dude, he, he pushes the one dude, Andy, down. The other two, he flings against the wall, and then he throws Andy, and it just happens to land on the car of the new uh, sheriff. When he turns around to leave, Lana is right there. And... She doesn't look too happy, although they defended you, so you know. Um, I don't think Pete's in this episode at all. The parents are a minor part. They're not really that big. Um, in the B plot, which is takes over the A plot, it actually this lawsuit thing is the B plot, even though it's the description of the episode. The main plot really has to do with Helen's ex boyfriend. The name I can't remember. Played by Anson Mount. So, for lack of a better name, I'm going to call him Black Bolt. So, Helen's ex-boyfriend Black Bolt here shows up and starts stalking her, which, of course, pisses off Flex. And, uh, this guy is something else. Let me tell you, this guy is nuts. He's crazy, like he... Like, it's because when episode starts, Helen is at the talent and she's reading paper or whatever and she sees him and then when she looks again, he's gone. And then he comes to talk to her. They were dating in, like, medical school, uh, but she broke up with him. We later find out it's because one of his ex-girlfriends showed up and told her, told her to, uh, Get rid of him, to dump him, because he's he's an abuser. Which she didn't she she didn't know if it was true or not, but she did you know play it safe, better safe or sorry, right? So she dumped him. She kicked him to the to the wind, whatever. I find this episode is very. So I'm trying to do this without spoiling stuff, but this is very a very sympathetic Helen episode. Helen sympathetic, very pro Helen, very sympathetic towards Helen, and knowing what I know about what becomes of her character, I don't. I don't know how to feel. Um, Clark finds out that Andy is faking it, but he can't prove it because um, he's on a restraining order of five hundred feet. Which, even being across the street picking up trash, and Andy's across the street in the hardware store, that's not 500 feet. 
So I don't understand. Like, I know they say he can't be 500 feet, but... Or he can't be 500 feet of Andy. But Clark is doing his uh, community service. So, legally, Andy should have been able to be anywhere on that block, but he was. When when Clark was talking, like, hey, can be 500 feet? Uh, yeah, I mean, well, one, he already was, because you, it, it should be both parties. You know, it should be, he can't be 500 feet anywhere near you, but that does not mean you can show up in a place where you know he's going to be. Like, he's he's doing this community service, and you knew he was going to be there. He shouldn't be allowed to do that. He shouldn't be allowed to show up across the street at a hardware store, you know. And this is where we find out, because he uses his x-ray vision to find out that he's faking it. And of course, he can't really prove it. And then, for some reason, this plot just goes away so Clark can help Lex with the, the Black Bolt situation. Because Black Bolt attacks Helen at the hospital, gravely injuring her. In, injuring her. He's battling for... Look. Fighting for her life is what I want to say. Look, I... No, no bones about it. I, I don't like Sheriff Adams. I don't. I just... I don't. She's too... I don't know. I don't know. It's just... Like... Just do a stereotypical cop for my liking. Like, stereotypical in a way of the cops in movies and TV where it doesn't matter the situation. She's going to go for it. Like, like at the beginning when Clark throws him on there, she sees Clark do this and thinks he's the guilty party instead of it being self-defense. And then... Um, Andy feeds her some bullshit story. Well, he attacked us. Well, he attacked... You know, and Sheriff Adams says, well, there's not enough evidence to conclude anything about. Well, Clark's a witness. He saw it. You know, I don't know. But, uh, or somebody damaged it or something. I don't know. And then, like, later, I don't know, I just don't like her. I mean, I think... The character gets better, but I just, I just don't like her right now. Um, so, Lex has a man named Meacham, what a name that is, following Black Bolt. And uh, he loses contact with him after Helen's attack. And so, um, the police are trying to get a warrant for a hotel room, which is not a full-time place of residence, so I don't... It, it's not, it's not his permanent place of residence. It's a hotel room. It's a public place. Do they need a warrant for a public place? I know that hotel rooms are supposed to be private people, but hotels are public places. Do they need a warrant for a hotel room? It doesn't, doesn't seem like they should. It seems more like they need it so that they can stretch the episode out. So Lex shows up there, and Clark finds him there. And they, he, he tries calling Meacham again, and the phone rings there. And of course, he's dead, but it takes so long to show it. And they, he's dead. Of course he's dead. And for some reason, they don't get in trouble for being there because their fingerprints are probably every, it's somewhere. Lex takes Meacham's gun, and he... Here's the thing. So he takes Meacham's gun. He's already touched it. And later when he, like, puts his, whatever, I don't know. His fingerprints are already on it. So why does he use a cloth to give it to, to Black Bolt? I don't know. Black Bolt tries to shoot him right away, which shows what kind of person he is. Yeah, they track him down to the train station, the train yards. Uh, and Lex goes on his own, leaving Clark behind. He's like... She, Clark's like, we should wait for Sheriff Adams. He's like, you do that, I'm gonna go, you know. And after a while, he stops. But Lex doesn't kill him. The picture I show you is where he's about to shoot him, but he doesn't. He pistol whips him, and then Sheriff Adams show up. And this is again where I don't like it. She's like, hey, put your hands up. I'm like, no, that's. I know that's police procedure, but it's too stereotypical, cop. 
it's too stereotypical of a cop. We need better TV cops to just come in and be like, oh, Jesus, you know, something like that. Like, not put put your hands up, put the gun there, put the gun up, put the gun there, put the gun there. Stop being stereotypical with your cops, okay? It's it's not, no, it's it's stupid, all right? I've seen enough TV shows to know that not every cop has to come into a situation and yell about, put your hands up, put the gun down, you know? Assess the situation before you start making accusations. That's the way you got to do it, right? But he says, Clark is just standing there doing nothing, and he's like, you know, whatever. Um, there is a subplot about Lex te teaching Lana how to uh, do self-defense. Which leads to a scene that makes no sense to me. She, So, her and Clark are planning on getting proof that he's faking it. So, she invites Andy, and she sort of starts talking to him, and he... He starts to harass her again, and then she kicks his ass and knocks him through, the, I think, the same thing she was knocked through. He's got blood dripping out of his lips. And then, in the very next scene, she, he, he tells Clark, well, he's dropping the lawsuit. I'm like, no, no. Now he could sue you. See, I don't understand this. Clark is being sued for attacking Andy. So Lester's decision here is to teach Lana self-defense. That's fine. But she uses it, not in self-defense, but to kick his ass. She twists his arm, and she bends him down, and then she kicks him over the thing. That's not self-defense. That is assault. Yes, he was harassing her. Yes, he was. But for her to just do that is an assault. If He didn't actually physically make a move on her at this point, right? Now, what Clark did was also technically assault, but the, he did verbally provoke him. But it's the same situation. So, yes, Clark got in trouble. That is what should legally happen. He got in trouble. I'm not that. I just don't like the, the sheriff, you know, being anything, and he's behind everything, and he's, you know, because it made it, in her eyes, he just attacked these three guys for no reason. There was a reason. If that was self-defense. Either she was protecting Lana. So maybe it wasn't as much of an assault as what Lana did. Because he didn't physically put his hands on Lana this time. Well, he didn't physically attack Clark because there's no way he'd possibly do that. It, it was self-defense. He was defending... Well, he was defending Lana. Not self-defense. He was defending Lana. It was defense. But what she did... Like, she grabs his hand. He does go to touch her. But he, she grabs his hand, twists it like this, bends him down, and then kicks him into the thing. That's why doesn't she do community service for that? Why does she get off scot free for something that Clark also did, and he had to do community service? Because we gotta wrap the episode up, right? If this happened earlier in the episode, we'd still be on this, and she'd be doing community service. You know, you can wrap the episode up and just cut to. Her doing community service with Clark, and they say something like, "Well, at least, at least they're dropping the lawsuit. At least we know that she got, you know, just desserts or whatever." But I don't know. I'll give it three star, three Superman logos out of five. It's fine. It's nothing. It's a slow crawl. I want something to happen in these last episodes, but I don't know. We're getting closer, I guess. It's it's those fillers that we gotta wait until you know then the last burst of episodes are just and get going. But yeah. So what are your thoughts on this episode? Leave a comment, let me share, like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. I'm Scotty, and I'll see you in the next one.